Hello, welcome to today's episode of The Heart of the Matter. With me, I have Mr. Lanrio Olushala. Um, he is a coach, he is a counselor, he is a psychotherapist, and he is a son of the Most High God. So, so um, we're, we're here to talk principally about family and marriage, but, but we're just going to talk about, about anything as we, we share together. Larry, you're welcome to the Heart of the Matter. Thank you very much again for inviting me on the Heart of the Matter. To start with, Larry, we're working collaboratively yes. to, to do a program that is meant to help marriages. Um, can you just tell us a bit about the program so that uh, our All viewers right. have an idea? All right, so um, the program is called um, Mind the Gap. And, um, you know, if, if, if you're conversant with uh, train travel uh, in Europe or, you know, uh, in developed countries, you'd find that um, there is a gap between the train and um, the track. And oftentimes there's a sign, you know, as you're about to step into the train to mind the gap. And that gap um, and that symbol, sim uh, you know, is warning you against uh, not taking the wrong step or heeding to the, you know, the, the, the red um, signs that say, you know, make sure that you take the right step before you get into um, the train. And if you don't, what happens to you? You fall into the cracks and you endanger your life and the lives of other people. And so we sought for a right name for this program. We sought for a right name for marriages because globally now they're saying that, you know, research is proven that one out of every two marriages is ending up in divorce and seven out of 10 marriages in Nigeria is ending up in one form of separation or the other. So we're asking ourselves, you know, what is it that people are getting wrong? What is it that is happening in families and in marriages today in the 21st century? What are the gaps that people need to mind, you know, and what exactly is it that they need to do? And, you know, we, 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 we asked ourselves, you know, what is the school that people need to go to um, in order to learn, acquire the knowledge, insight, and wisdom to be able to build the right homes, uh, the right families, and, you know, live in the, in the right um, marriages. And we thought that it was important for us to bridge the gap between um, families and, you know, marriages. And, you know, uh, one of the most profound, you know, uh, statements I've heard about the school of marriage from you, Pastor Wale, is that, the family institution was the original place where you were supposed to learn about marriage. You're supposed to learn the right values, the right beliefs, and you know, the right philosophies you know, and character that you carry into your marriage and then you transfer to your children. But that institution is failing. So who is going to bridge that gap? And how are we going to bridge that gap? And that's why we set up Mind the Gap. And Mind the Gap is a series of five programs. The first one, we held it in March, and the theme was the foundation and the five pillars that you build your marriage and relationship and family upon. The foundation being God, and the five pillars being friendship, being kindness, being empathy, uh, being maturity, being forgiveness, and understanding and not knowledge of one another. And the theme for the next one, based on the challenges that we're experiencing today financially, is family and finances. And we've got a huge array of experts and professionals that are going to come and talk to us about family investments, um, how to practically build your wealth. Uh, we're going to talk about God and money. We're going to talk about the psychology of money. So we've got about six or seven speakers, uh, Pastor Lumide Emanuel, Dr. Um, Muda Shiru, who's the Deputy Managing Director of Vetiva. Um, Omilola Oshikoa, you're also speaking, I'm speaking, and a whole array of speakers. And so, you know, it's for couples, it's for divorcees, it's for people that are dating, that are engaged, um, it's for people that are having challenges in their, in their marriages, it's for people that are experiencing, you know, good, good things in their marriages, but they want to take it to another level. So it's for everybody. Now, um, it seems that Mind the Gap is focusing on marriages. What, in your view, are the key problems that marriages in our country are facing today? Well, I, I, I'll say 
You know, the, the number one uh, thing is ignorance. Um, quite a lot of people, people are ignorant about what is required to, uh, um, to live a successful life, one, to live your own life, to discover what your purpose is. Now, if you are confused, it is okay, and you're, you're leading yourself in the wrong direction, it is okay. But when you are a husband, you have a wife, you have children, and you are confused. Then you confuse your wife and you confuse your children. It is a, you know, it is, it is doomsday, you know, and, and, and it will create destruction. So a lot of times it is a function of ignorance. What are people ignorant of? Number one, they're ignorant about their purpose. Secondly, they're ignorant about the purpose for which they're in that marriage. Because every marriage has a purpose. And the two people that come together um, as one in that marriage are supposed to have a vision, a mission. Um, and they're supposed to execute a purpose within their environment. And one of the purposes is to bring about godly children that are brought up in an environment that fosters self-esteem, self-pride. And for those children, you know, to discover what their gifts and talents are and for those children to fulfill their purpose. Now, a lot of people are not living their purpose. A lot of people are ignorant about that. A lot of people are dysfunctional. So two dysfunctional people create a dysfunctional environment that create dysfunctional children. And so you find out that at the heart of a lot of the challenges is ignorance. Now, when you get into dysfunctionality, then other things begin to suffer. You know, then you stop being friends. That's the second thing. A lot of marriages, they get into roles. Once they marry, they pack friendship, and then they switch to husband and wife. That's the first level of detachment. Now, um, they no longer are best of friends. Then they start to see each other as husband and wife. Then they switch into those roles. Then the second level of detachment is when the children come. Then they start to see themselves as Baba Taiwo. Yeah, Taiwo. That's the second level of detachment. And all that they talk about is everything that has to do with the children. They have left their first love, which is themselves and their relationships. Then they fail to understand that human beings are human beings and we will offend one another. And, you know, and so when you offend me, I take it to heart. And then I start to live in unforgiveness, not knowing fully well that, you know what, we're going to offend each other. We're going to see things from different perspectives. And it is when two of us come together with different perspectives that we can see the whole perspective. And then we're able to make the right decisions for our lives and the lives of our children. And so, so there, there's so many things that, that you know, um, are the result of, of, of that one thing, ignorance. Now, the, the, the theme of the next Mind the Gap uh, um, episode is finance, yes. marriage and finance. What are the financial challenges that you think marriages are facing today? What and why? Wow. You know, society is at a place where, you know, uh, where, 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 you know, loading our children with a lot of pressure. So it starts from the bigger society. The bigger society expects certain things, you know, from us, from a cultural perspective. We're merrymaking people, you know, um, as if we, if we looked at ourselves as Yorubas, Igbos, Hausas, we love to have fun. So the parents want to have an elaborate wedding. So that one day, or those two days, the engagement and the wedding itself has to be elaborate. So they save all their money and they spend it on that one day, on those two days. Now, what happens? This is the parents of the couple. Yes, getting the parents married. of the couple. So marriage is really more, the wedding day is more for the parents than, than it is the for the couple. Yes. And it's more for the parents showing off. I mean, if a lot of parents really, really truly search their hearts and ask themselves, why are we doing such an elaborate party? It is simply because your friends have done for their children. And subconsciously, you have made up your mind that you would outdo your friends. So if you have to go and beg, borrow, or steal, or go in debt, they will do it. You know, and they force the couple to do that. Now, gone are the days when 
a lot of parents lived for giving inheritance to their children to go and start their lives. So in those days, you know, in the, in the 70s and the 80s, they will give you a, a house, they will give you a car, they will give you money to go and start a business, or, you know, they, they, they would equip you for the life that you're about to start. So the very first thing is now you, they've put you on a pedestal, so you have to live up to the expectations in the eyes of society. So you cannot not have. And if you don't have, you are under pressure to prove to the Joneses that you are you know, in line with them. So they put a lot of pressure on their children. Now, when the children get under pressure, you know, then they start to make wrong decisions. So societal pressure, parental pressure. And then, you know, a lot of couples, you know, haven't sat down to count the cost before they get into it. So they're rushing into getting married. What is the rush in getting married? Are you financially independent? Are both of you financially independent? And, and that is very, very key. A lot of couples really and truly cannot stand on their own. Individually, talk less of taking responsibility for somebody else or taking responsibility for your children. Another thing is, you know, um, the way that we live in Nigeria is we run our own local government. So you have a home, you have to power your home, you have to, you know, provide your own water, provide your own, water, your security. own security. Then you have to have a nanny and, and all of that. And that is adding to your pressure financially. Besides that, is when you start having children, a lot of people don't weigh the cost of education of schools. Schools are so expensive, especially if you want your children to go to the best schools, you know. And then again, then your lifestyle. You know, you want to keep up with the Joneses. You want to drive that car. You want to wear the designers. You know, you want to live, you know, in, in, on the island. You know, if you're not there yet, you are not there yet. And it doesn't take away from who you are. So your sense of identity and your sense of self-worth of who you are is affected and infected based on what your parents have done and the platform that they have put you upon. So a lot of um, our children today are working from a deficit from the point of marriage. And, and these and many other things are at the, at the heart of it. Believe it or not, I have conducted wedding ceremonies in my office. Wow. I mean, we just, uh, you, can, you, can, you can get married in an office. Um, for people who just didn't want to have the pressure um, because they were seeing beyond the wedding day into the marriage itself. They didn't want the pressure of finances, so they married quietly and maybe invited a few friends afterwards to lunch together, and that was it. So we're going to come back and talk about, about marriage and finance. Uh, viewers, we're, we're just going on a short break. Stay tuned to The Heart of the Matter. Welcome back to the heart of the matter where we're talking um, about marriage, uh, about family with Mr. Landry Olushala. Just before the break, we're talking about finance and marriage. Now, here's, here's a, another thing to talk about. In my grandfather's day, men were the ones that worked. Wives were housewives. In my father's day, some wives worked. Um, and somehow the man was still the predominant earner in the home. But today, there are many homes, particularly in the West, where the man stays at home and the wife works because the man stays to, at home to look after the children. Here in Nigeria, we're beginning to see a lot more women, in fact, most women, 
get an education, start working, and some of them earn more, sometimes a lot more than their husbands. Uh, uh, is this putting a strain on marriage, and why? Yes, it is. Um, uh, number one is there's, there's culture versus our culture versus the Western culture. One of the things that I've realized is um, there are certain men that you know, um, subscribe to our culture, but also want to balance it when you know, it suits them with what they want from the Western world. It's either you are full cultural and traditional, or you know, you're, you're, you're the 21st century husband. You know, so I find that there's a lot of clash in there. There's a lot of conflict. And um, you know, um, the conflict comes when you want to put your foot down and say you must do this, you must do this without a dialogue, without understanding, without a knowledge and, you know, of one another. There's absolutely nothing wrong if both of you agree that, you know what, for this season, you know what, these are the challenges that I'm going through, this is what I want to focus on, and then you become the breadwinner. Once you both have that understanding, but most importantly, you have a budget, and both of you sit down and run through what your expenses are, and you don't overshoot what your budget is every month. A lot of homes don't have a budget of what they want to spend every month on food, on electricity, on entertainment, you know, on education, on, you know, taking care of themselves, you know, and yeah, developing I, I themselves. I use this illustration. I tell people that if you go to the shops and you don't have a list of what you want to buy, mm -hmm. you will end up coming away from the shops with far more than you than, intended. Than, than, you know, so a lot of people don't sit down and, 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 and go through that painful exercise. If, if, uh, oftentimes, I ask a lot of marriages that are having challenges from finances, you know, that how much money do you spend on your critical needs every month? They don't know. How much money do you spend on your basic needs? They don't know. How much money do you spend on your wants? So we encourage you know, families like that to color code their expense profile. I ask a lot of um, couples how much money comes in every month. They can't really tell. You know, and, and do both of you know exactly how much money both of you are earning? Now, um, the most important thing is trust in this co uh, context, because if the husband truly trusts the wife, if the wife truly trusts the husband with money, then there won't be any challenges, you know. But oftentimes, you know, uh, they say that where your money is is where your heart is. So a lot of people are also carrying over the mindset and the culture when they say that your mothers tell their daughters that your husband's money is your money, but your own money is your own money. But so, so we're carrying over a lot of things. Now, we need to sit down with our spouses and determine what our vision is, our own family values, and our core philosophy and beliefs. In this family, this is our culture. Both of us, let's agree. You know, this is where we're going. This is how we're going to live our lives. This is what we're going to focus on. This is what our faith will be. And this is what will drive us, you know. And so you sit down as a family also to budget, um, to look at your expense profile. And most importantly, identify who is gifted, you know, with saving and holding money. Who is gifted with being disciplined with you know, spending the money, who is gifted in investing the money, you know, identify each other's strengths and weaknesses because that's why both of you are there, to complement each other, not to fight each other in the area of your weaknesses with your strengths. You are supposed to use your, your strengths to cover up and complement your spouse's weakness. And likewise, your spouse's strength is supposed to cover up your weaknesses. So. There is absolutely nothing wrong, especially with the level of financial requirement. I mean, in, in, in the days of your grandfather, there was light. There was no generator. You know, people could safely take buses, ride bicycles. You know, um, where they were living, you know, was communal. So you could take a ride from, from your neighbors to wherever you were going. There was not so much societal pressure then. Then we move to the days of, of, of your fathers where, you know what, it's a mix between, you know, some women work and some women don't work. But today, you know, judging from, you know, the kind of lifestyles you want to live, you guys need to determine what you want. But today there's some wives that, you know, have agreed that, you know what, we're going to stay at home and take care of our children. 
because we don't want house girls raising our children because there's a cost to everything. When both of you work and you don't get home till 12, who's going to suffer? You have your nanny, you know, bringing up your children and they invariably pick up their values and their beliefs, you know, and then 10, 15, 20, 25 years later, your children are not really your children. They are your nanny's children because they've imbibed their values. So, you know, um, to deal with all of these challenges, you really need to sit down and determine the reason why you want to bring children into this world and why you want to bring children now. Be beyond that, you need to step back and ask yourself, why do I want to marry now? Why do I want to marry this person now? And what do we need to put in place so that we don't suffer, you know, from what a lot of people suffer? And it's important that you live your own lives. Mm -hmm. Very critical. Now, let's go to Lanri Olushola. You have different hats, but they're all interrelated. Yeah. Let's talk about Lanri Olushola, the coach. Yeah. What do you do as the coach? <sighs> so, simply put, um, I'm a life coach, and um, I help people, you know, design their lives. So there are 12 dimensions to everybody's lives, and uh, I help them look at life holistically from those 12 dimensions. Um, because if you focus in one area, every other area of your life will suffer. And then you will not have equilibrium so, or so harmony. Can you tell us at least some of the dimensions? So, so there's your spiritual, emotional, and, and mental health and well-being. There's your achievement and your goals in life. There is your contentment and peace. There is your work, your career, or your business. Uh, there's your spirituality and security. There is also the, your energy and passion. There's also your self-esteem, your self-confidence, and self-belief that we believe is a secret cocktail to success. Then there's fun, recreation, and rest. There's home and family. There's your relationship with your spouse, and there's your finances. Now, you know, we use a tool called the Wheel of Life to assess and take a snapshot of your life. And then we find where you're skewed. And then we begin to help you gravitate towards, you know, a life of harmony. That's what a life coach does. They help you redesign your life, you know, and, you know, move in the direction that you need to move faster than is you can. Is this a yourself. once and for all thing you do with, with people or is it a continuous thing? that You help them get started and then you're, you're tracking them and helping them measure. Yes, so, so the very first thing is to um, create awareness and willingness. The second thing is to set goals around all of those 12 areas. And the third thing is they say that what never gets assessed never gets done to its optimum. So we help them, handhold them, begin that journey over the period that, that they, they want us to help them run, run through. And then we empower them and equip them to be able to sit down on their own and you know, work through so the So you're the coaching models. couples or individuals? We coach both. We coach okay. couples, individuals, organizations with, within teams. So we do a lot of team building. So we run a lot of personality profiling also, where you understand what your temperaments are, your personality, mm -hmm. you know, and then you know the strengths and the weaknesses of those personalities and who you're most compatible with as a spouse or within a team, or within which organization. Now, every personality is skewed towards a career. So we help you identify what business best or career best suits your personality as life coaches. Yeah. Okay. Now we want to talk about Mr. Lanry Olushala, the psychotherapist. Now, whenever the word psycho or psyche is mentioned in the Nigerian context, yeah. people think about um, people with... with travel. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and even mental disease and so on and so forth. Because whereas in, in some Western countries, people have a culture of visiting a psychotherapist, yeah. over here you only go if there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Um, so, so what is it like being Landry Olushala, the psychotherapist? Wow. Um, it's, it's quite interesting because, you know, one thing that has always interested me is the human spirit and the human soul. So I remember when I first became born again at the Fountain of Life Church and um, Pastor Tao, you know, um, said that I should teach believers class. And he gave me what model to teach. He, he gave me the model to teach on the human spirit and the human soul, you know. And I did a lot of intensive study way back then, over 20 years ago. And that was where the interest started from. And then 13 years ago, I was running eight businesses, focusing on my engineering. I studied civil engineering in school. And one day I was praying and God says to me, my son, I need you to shut down all your businesses 
and I need you to help transform lives through transforming minds. And, and I sat down and I, and I asked him, you know, how, why, how, you know, what does this mean? I don't really get it. And God says to me, as a man thinks in his heart, so easy. Now, he, he asked me a question, you know, wh where do you think and where do you feel? Now, it says that's a paradox. You don't think with your heart. You think with your head and you feel with your heart. But your head and your heart are connected. So it was many years ago in neuroscience school that I realized that your thoughts and your intentions provoke energy. And they send signals to your heart that provokes an emotion. And a combination of your thought energy and your emotional energy sends signal to your neural system and your muscles to provoke behaviors. So what is psychotherapy? Psychotherapy is an understanding of the human thoughts, the human mind, and the human emotions, and how you know, it influences you to create behaviors and habits. And not just understanding that dynamic, it is how do you change those behaviors? So how do you influence your emotions? How do you influence your habits? How do you influence your, you know, um, the things that, that, that you do, your actions? So Larry Olushola as a psychotherapist simply helps people understand that dynamic. Their thoughts, their words, their emotions, and how that influences behavior and how you can change behavior. And you know, behavior is a very interesting thing, looking at it from the neuroscience or the psychoanalytical perspective. Behavior is simply a coping mechanism for how you interpret your interaction within a given environment. So behavior is a product of your environment. If you want to change your behavior, then you need to understand the environment that created it, the benefits, uh, that you've derived from it, then change that environment, how be it from deep within or from external. So the mind and the body are one and the same system. They are connected. So you can change your mindset through your physical being or change your physical being through your mindset. So today, um, you know, medical science has proven that, you know, 95%, between 85 to 90% of disease is caused by stress. And stress is simply how you interpret your engagement in your environment. And engagement within your environment provokes emotions, provokes, you know, behaviors. And so those emotions and behaviors critically influence your biology and then your physical health. So as a psychotherapist, we're looking from the perspective of how you have spiritual and emotional health and well-being so that you can live a healthy lifestyle, you know, and you can have good health in your, in your physical essence. Okay. Now, quickly, because of time, Landry Olushola, the counselor, um, and, and I, I, I assume that people who have challenges, not necessarily marital, will come for counseling. Yes. People who have mar marriage problems will come. Tell us a little bit about the counseling. That well, you, you know, um, the counseling is really the, the, the way we do it is, is we combine the coaching and the psych psychotherapy. Um, people come expecting that you're an expert and you can advise them. But, you know, um, we've learned in the 21st century that, you know, everyone that has a problem has an answer. So we don't, you know, do the outside in. Um, counseling. We do the inside out counseling where we ask them questions. If you understand how Jesus, you know, worked with people, Jesus will speak a parable or he will ha ask a question. It was because he intended to draw out what was in, inside of you first before he fed you with what he needed to feed you with or correct what he needed to correct. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So as a counselor is we sit down and really truly listen out for patterns for limiting beliefs and barriers that are getting in people's ways and we can ultimately identify those things and help transform. So the, the, the man by, that, that stayed by the pool of Bethesda for 30, 38 years, Jesus asked him, you know, what do you want? And he says, I need a man to help me. Now, if you've been by the pool looking for the angel to stir the water, then you will not be looking for a man. You'll be moving gradually. So Jesus was able to identify what the man's limiting beliefs were. He was looking for a man, and Jesus took that position of that man and told him to pick up his mat, what he couldn't do for 38 years. And the man had a belief, and his belief was, if I find a man that empowers me, I'll pick up my mat. Now, without Jesus, 
asking him what he wanted, asking him what his problem was, he would not have been able to solve that problem. And likewise, when we counsel is we start off by asking very, very critical questions that reveal the state of people's hearts so that we know where they are in terms of their beliefs because beliefs are very powerful. They transform people's lives. And, and so we plug in into, into their beliefs and then we connect God into that situation and then God can solve the problems. And you have seen lots of people come through the process and their problems resolve. Oh yes, most definitely. I mean, we, we, we would say 95 to 96% because it requires awareness and willingness. Some people are forced to come for counseling and so they're not even aware of why they're there and they're unwilling to come. Now with sort people you can't help them. Okay, now before we go, mind the gap. The next episode is coming up soon. Tell us a bit more about it, when and, and all the requirements for, to be Alright, so, so mind the gap uh, is coming up on the 4th of June and is holding at the Guiding Light Assembly um, Parkview in Ikoi. And it's going to be running from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we have different, um, you know, sessions. There's going to be the morning session, and we've got a, we, we have four speakers. And um, after that morning session, we have a plenary session and a, and a Q and A session for about one hour, one hour thirty minutes. Now, if you have children, please bring your children along because we're going to set up. Um, you know, an area where we're going to take care of your children. So if your issue is, is where am I going to put my children, this is church. Please bring them to church. But this program is not a churchy program because we're inviting experts from the banking sector and, you know, ED in, in, an, in Echo Bank is going to be speaking. The head of, you know, um, corporate banking of Diamond Bank is going to be speaking. The deputy managing director of Vertiva Financial Services is going to be speaking. You know, so, so we have a good array of, of, of speakers and it's just 5,000 naira for each individual. And if it's two of you, a couple, it's five times two, which is 10,000 naira. And then food, lunch is going to be served. There's also tea breaks, there's coffee, there's snacks. You know, and we're going to all generally just have a good entertaining an empowering time and you know it's again it's on the 4th of June and how do you register for this program just send an email to mindthegapxx at gmail.com and signify your interest send us your name your email address your phone number and then we'll send you the account details um, for you to make payment and once you make payment we will send you your ticket to attend the program don't worry if you didn't copy the email address, it's going, we're going to put it on the screen and all the other details that you need to know. Thank you very much, uh, Lanry, for Thank coming to the Heart of the Matter. It's been a pleasure bringing this episode of the Heart of the Matter to you. Until we meet again, stay blessed.